The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider or via questions at the options insider.com now we begin with an exceptional presentation one that represents the very best of options industry leadership to present this year's hallowed sullivan award please welcome nasdaq executive vice president and head of global trading and market services tom whitman So Dan told me to hurry up, and I'm not going to hurry up. It's going to be long. So uh, I get to do something fun and get to, uh, to give the award out, but I first wanted to just give you a couple sentences on what the Sullivan Award is. The Sullivan's Options Industry Achievement Award was established in 2002 to recognize outstanding contributions to the options industry. When I think of this award, I also think of innovation, the use of technology to change the way options traded bringing new ways for the market makers to participate in the marketplace, and also automation, taking automation of complex order flow to a new level. Order flow functionality to another level, which helps grow the, the industry volume. I had a unique view to these changes from the seat that I sat on really at the Philly Stock Exchange through the time that Gary and the ISC were evolutionizing the trading platforms. And I gotta tell you that it was a lot of anxiety and stress for us watching the change because it put us in a position where we were gonna have to try to keep up with the ISC and Gary. So for that, Gary, I thank you. On more of a personal note, a couple years ago when Gary and I got together to do the, the transaction, I realized through all the years where he and I competed fiercely for order flow and uh, market share, that sitting down with him and his team as we were going through this process, I mean, I saw a, a totally different guy. That was me seeing him, but I know that Gary was always that way. A guy that really built a family within the ISC. You know, the way they ran the company and the business was truly family-oriented. He cultivated that relationship within the, within the uh, entire IS, ISC organization, as well as with all of you, the customers. I know there's great respect that you guys have for Gary, um, as I learned in working with him through that transition. Gary, we have a lot of respect for you, what you've accomplished and your contributions to the options industry. Gary, it's my honor to present to you the Sullivan Award for 2018. Welcome Gary out. Thank you, Tom, for that very kind introduction. One of the wonderful things about the Sullivan Award is that it's not given posthumously, and I get to hear nice things being said about me. Thank you to OCC, OIC, all the exchanges, and NASDAQ specifically for hosting this conference and for this wonderful recognition. OIC holds a special place in my heart as I was one of its co-founders when OCC and the then five exchanges formed it after the 1987 correction. My long relationship with OCC explains how I came to be here today. While being associated with OCC for over 30 years, including 18 years of board service, I had the opportunity to work with many outstanding management teams, leading figures from industry clearing firms, as well as industry directors. And over that time, my wife Shelley, who is here today, and I had the pleasure of forming bonds and friendships that we cherish. At my last OCC board dinner to which Shelley was invited, Craig Donahue shared that everyone liked Shelley more than me, that she was the reason they kept me on the board. He wondered aloud whether they could fill my open position with Shelley as a non-industry director. So it's very clear to me that this award was a carefully planned subterfuge 
to get Shelley back to an options industry event. Truth be told is that Shelley is first on a long list of people who are the real reason that I have received this award today. If I began to name everyone who I learned from, was awed by, leaned on, relied on, benefited from, was mentored by, dueled with, competed with, and was regulated or governed by, I would far exceed my allotted speaking time and you would all feel like you read the longest markets wiki page ever. I could speak for hours about each of the prior 15 Sullivan Award winners, all but one of whom I had the distinct honor to have worked with, competed with, consulted with, or worked for. But that would then ignore every individual that I worked with at the NYSE, ISC, Eurex, Deutsche Börse Group, and NASDAQ. So instead, I would like to tell my story and thank a few specific people using a unique presentation style developed over the course of many ISC holiday parties. Most of you do not know that in 1982, after graduating from college with a bachelor's degree in applied mathematics, oops, I embarked on an actuarial career at Equitable Life Assurance. Two years later, after passing the first five of 10 required exams to become an associate actuary, a senior executive shared with me that if you wanted to know if a lifelong career in a specific industry was for you, just look around at retiring executives and picture yourself in their shoes. Two days later, I applied to NYU for graduate school and resigned shortly thereafter. In 1986, I graduated from NYU with a master's degree in statistics and operations research. I was the original geek squad. But I desperately wanted to find a profession, any profession, other than actuarial sciences. Now I know that some of you think that David Krell and I have known each other our entire lives. In reality though, David and I met in 1986. David, a previous Sullivan Award winner, has been my dear friend for over 32 years. There is no one who understands this business better, has had a greater impact on our industry and maybe most importantly is a nicer person than David. More on him later. Now back to where we were. In 1986, while working for the NYSE, David called the dean of NYU's statistics department looking for a recent graduate who might be interested in joining NYSE's diversified products team. In order for me to make it through the front door of the NYSE, I had to first meet the person for whom this team was named. It was literally on the front door. This was the lettering on the glass doors as you entered NYSE's options department. That's right, Ivers. Ivers Riley, another Sullivan Award winner. Mr. Putz himself, so named for his relentless pursuit of the SEC, forcing them to approve listed puts trading a number of years after Kohl's trading had already begun. Ivers raked me over the coals. It took quite some time to get past his high expectations, not to mention the fact that while I knew how to price an option, I had no experience trading and no knowledge of stocks or derivatives markets. Thankfully, Ivers got past these shortcomings and hired me. There I am in my first week at the NYSE. Ivers promised to personally teach me all about the options business, and then one week later, Ivers left New York and went to the American Stock Exchange. I swear, I had nothing to do with that. I would end up moving in and out of Ivers' sphere of influence for many years, culminating with his joining the ISC board at launch and ultimately becoming one of its greatest chairmen. He was a magnet. People listened to him, walked through walls for him, and revered his knowledge, his ability to drive innovation and focus on the customer. For example, Ivers was at the coalface when the Spider ETF was developed at the Amex. Ivers passed away in 2015. I lost a good friend, but this industry lost a consummate leader. For 11 years at the NYSE, David Krell was my boss and mentor. During that time, David poured his knowledge of the options market and so much more into me. You see, I had a big heart, but he had the brains. During that time, David gave me the opportunity 
to, among many other things, design exchange-traded indexes, run the infamous lottery for selecting equity options, work with OCC and the Options Industry Council, attend and run multiple options industry conferences, and teach classes on options pricing and trading, market technical analysis, and index construction. It was David's mentorship, his management style, his relationships throughout the industry, and his willingness to share all of this with me that prepared me for our next step together. After achieving a dismal, at best, 1.5% market share, we came to believe that without technical uh, innovation, NYSE options would fail. We had met a company called OM that was selling the software used to run Sweden's electronic options market. We wanted to introduce the company and the idea to the then CEO, Dick Rasso, of the New York Stock Exchange. Our premise? An all electronic options market would leapfrog the NYSE options business above all its competitors by improving the customer experience. Dick greeted us kindly when we walked into the conference room on the vaunted sixth floor of 11 Wall Street. He listened intently as we explained that electronic trading could revolutionize the options trading experience, and then we told him that there would be no trading floor. Well, there you have a historic moment, a predictor of future market structure and the true beginnings of the end of my NYSE employment. New York sold the options business to the CBOE in 1997, and David and I left to start a consulting company, K-Squared Research. Catchy name, right? I told you I was a geek deep down, and in truth, David was as well. Soon after that, we were approached by executives at E-Trade. They had met the SEC to explore launching the first new exchange in the U.S. since 1973. The SEC was excited about their plan to compete with other options markets. Remember that at that time, the most heavily traded options were, for the most part, traded on only one options market. There was effectively no competition. The SEC strongly encouraged them to proceed. E-Trade thought it was going to be as easy as draining this putt. After a number of visits to Sweden, David and I dove into developing the business and technical specifications for ISE and then made plans to visit the SEC. In late 1997, we met Richard Lindsay, then SEC's head of market reg, the equivalent of today's trading in markets. Excuse my golf slang, but it was not going to be a gimme. The SEC would not support our initial business plan or our unique functionality, let alone a technology that had not yet been built. It took the SEC nearly three years to approve us. The good thing is it took that long for us to build the ISC team and to develop the technology platform with OM. We finally launched in 2000, and to understate what happened, the next 15 years were magical. As industry volumes as a result of competition price compression, and technological and functional innovations exploded. Understand that in 1999, an options quote looked like this. Quotes in fractions and no displayed size with implied small guaranteed size for customers, not professionals. One year later, the industry was displaying quotes in decimals with available size displayed through Opera. ISE introduced to the U.S. market what you see is what you get, intra-market competition between market makers, the first front-end user interface for interacting with displayed quotes and orders, as well as electronic trading of spread orders. But importantly, and I cannot stress this enough, the growth of our industry was not a result of ISE's innovations alone. Over this time period, Every exchange's competitive nature kicked into high gear, and we one-upped each other year after year with new functionality, faster speeds, competitive pricing, and enhanced customer service. Competition and innovation improve what the exchanges offer to the industry. And market makers joined the party as well. Many existing firms stepped up big time, and new firms entered into the space with faster, more sophisticated pricing and hedging technologies and deeper pockets, allowing for vastly more competitive markets. 
New vendors entered the marketplace, and brokerage firms provided retail customers technology that until that time had been exclusively reserved for institutions. It was, as they say, the perfect storm, and our industry was fundamentally changed. Five years later, in 2005, ISC was the first securities exchange in the U.S. to go public, and two years after that, Deutsche Börse Group's Eurex, led by their CEO, Andreas Preuss, bought us outright. After 10 years as CEO of ISC, upon the closing of the transaction with Eurex, David fulfilled his succession plan and graciously gave me the opportunity to step into the CEO role. David provided a beacon for my management style and what he coined the ISC mentality. While I am my own person, I have David to thank the most for all that I have achieved. My one piece of advice that I feel comfortable sharing with all of you is that when you meet the person who you know will complement and enhance your life both professionally and personally, pay attention and, cl and stick close to them. The ride will absolutely amaze you. I did that with David and it worked out pretty well. Come to think of it, that strategy has worked out pretty well for the last 32 years with Shelley. As CEO of ISE, I worked for Andreas for 10 years until we were sold to NASDAQ. Andreas was vice chairman of ISE's board and I sat on the board of Eurex. It was an opportunity to learn from Andreas in so many different environments through countless challenging situations. One very important lesson that Andreas stressed was that understanding different cultures was the key to successfully leading an international organization. Idioms in any language are the most difficult to translate properly and can be the cause of great misunderstandings. But getting to know Andreas over those 10 years provided an insight into the man that many of you don't know, and I would like to share a very personal example of this. Shortly after our deal closed, I mentioned to Andreas that my father had been born in Frankfurt, and my great-grandfather, who I was named for, was buried there, but no one had ever seen the tombstone. For reasons that are far too com complicated for this brief speech, my father and I cannot enter a cemetery due to religious restrictions. Andreas, without my knowing it, bought a camera, and he and his wife, Christina, walked through one of the oldest cemeteries in Frankfurt and took hundreds of pictures of tombstones, which he then sent to me on a disc. I scrolled through the images, straining to see a clue when I found this. I don't expect you to be able to read Hebrew, but that is my name. That is the correct date of death, and that is my great-grandfather's tombstone. He died the week before Kristalna, the night of broken glass, just months before my eight-year-old father and his parents were forced to leave Germany for the United States. It is a link that will bind me and Andreas for a lifetime. So that brings me to the present. In the Barron's announcement about the Sullivan Award, the article says that by the time I ended my career, trading floors had been replaced by electronic trading systems. I think Mr. Sears was picturing me as follows when he said that my career was over. My career is not over. And it's not the end of trading floors as we just learned. <laughs> I'm just getting started. I joined the Board of Interactive Brokers. I am a director of Autism Communities, a nascent charity dedicated to providing alternative housing solutions for adults with autism. And I launched a new company called Farmer's Pantry. We are selling a combination of moist meat jerky with a dry snack and cornbread crisps. I hope you're enjoying the samples that are in front of you. Why snack food? Well, there are so many similarities between the options industry and the consumer goods industry. For example, we have slotting fees. The snack maker or liquidity providers pay grocery stores to be able to sell their products to the customers. Sounds familiar? You must probably recognize this as payment for order flow. From a regulatory perspective, 
the two industries work quite well together. And we have brown shells. And you have Shelly Brown. Actually, the reason for launching this company is a well-planned re-entry back into the options industry through a back door. My hope is that like Skinny Pop Popcorn, which is owned by Amplify, we too will one day go public. Thank you, Sandy. And then, five days later, the CBOE and by then the other 19 options exchanges will list options on Farmer's Pantry, and I will be back. Well, there you have my history in PowerPoint style, and in all seriousness, I thank you for this honor. I do believe that I helped change and grow the listed options business, but this award is the result of having worked with many people, including all of you, to support one of the greatest industries I could ever ask to be a part of. Thank you. The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options. Options Insider or via questions at theoptionsinsider.com.